Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order at 7 o'clock. Um, okay. Could, can the minutes of the uh, of uh, of uh, June, yeah, June, of May 4th, please, special meeting. Can I have a motion? So moved. From Second. Okay. Jennifer, did you get who the, who that was? Fine. Yes, I got it. Okay. Any additions or corrections? Yeah, I got a question for you. Okay. And the header, it says May 4th. On the first paragraph, it says May 5th. Uh, I believe uh, we met on May 5th. Ooh, that, I think you're right. I thought it was May 5th. I don't have a May calendar. It was a Monday. The 4th was a Sunday. I think you're right. Oh, okay. Yep, so it should change that up on top of this. Okay. Okay. So I have a May motion to accept the minutes of uh, May 5th. Uh, it's, hey, Rich. Yep. Yeah. May 4th was Monday. Oh, it was. Yep. And I have our meeting. Um, I'll believe you if you say, yeah, it was. So we need to change the May 5th in the first May paragraph yep. to 4th. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay. okay. All right. No, One had to be. Okay. Cool. <laughs> very good. Very good, Rich. First Thank paragraph. you. Okay, so uh, do we have a motion? I mean, do we have it uh, approved to change the minutes uh, to May 4th? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So opposed? So carried. Moving on. Okay. I need to abstain. I was absent. Oh, okay. Got that? That mic? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, okay. moving on. Jennifer. No, are you, you, you all set, Jennifer? Janice, yes, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, Janice, I'm sorry, Janice. Okay. That's all right. Then the That's next right. item would be item two, the Board of Selectmen of the Report. Jackie, you have anything to tell us about? My update might be better served by Scott Baker, who's on. Uh, my understanding is the Board of Ed approved uh, adding sixth grade to Henry James. Oh, so that's really? pretty exciting. Yes, that's correct. That was last... Um... Last Tuesday, I believe. When will we see that? <laughs> well, that, I mean, I think that, that they approved it in, you know, in concept. This is what um, the building and grounds, this was our building and grounds task force that, oh, yeah. right. Right. that did all that. So it, this is all about our space um, crunch that we're going to have. And, um, and then, you know, educationally, the Board of Education did a, a large study about where the right place to be for sixth graders is. And so that's where that vote okay. came down last week. Are they gonna are they gonna add on or are they gonna just re renovate the interior? What, no, it'll, it'll, it would have to be an add on. There's a whole, there's a proposal that the, the building and grounds committee um, has. Will they, will they talk to us before they go ahead and the spot because we you know we've done everything to that school and I know uh, I hope they'll talk to you first they talk to at least get us involved with it before they make a decision because they, they put it on the north end and we're saying wait a minute the south end is better I'm, I'm being facetious you know what I'm saying yeah. I think we should all sit down and talk about it first yeah for sure okay good all right so that's that's thank you Jackie mm -hmm. that's good news <laughs> I'm and, a quick I'm question we're doing it there I thought they would just do something else somewhere else but that's besides the other part of the Board of Ed meeting that was approved is they're going to start renovation on Latimer, Latimer yes, Lane yeah. School. Yeah. Those so are the two updates. Until next year, probably at the end of the year. It, it may take longer than that, but yeah. 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 I have a question for you on that. Go ahead. Um, so they're going to renovate the school as opposed to knocking it down and putting up a new building? That's what they're talking about right now, uh, Rich. Which? Yes. For which one, Seven. Rich? For Latimer Lane, are they going to knock it down and put up a new building, or are they going to renovate the building? Renovate it. Renovate uh, last I heard. I don't know, Scott. Have you heard more on that? I'm not sure. I mean, there were there were two proposals. One one was to knock it down yeah. um, and then use the existing Latimer Lane as a swing space as we right. renovate the others. Um, uh, and then another part of the proposal was to renovate as new. Right. Um, and I, I wasn't at the board of me ed meeting last week, so I'm not sure <laughs> where we are with that. Yeah, last I heard through the grapevine is there is renovation of it more so than uh, knocking yeah. it down. People were not too happy about knocking a school down. They wanted to renovate it. Andrew, you hear anything about it? Andrew? Sorry, I was on mute. So my understanding was a renovate. Yeah, renovate is new and the additional 
the addition of um, sixth grade to Henry James. I think the issue on that, Dick, was that you you have in order to solve our space problem, you have to do both of those. And if we weren't going to do the sixth grade, then you would have to build a new Latimer because you would need to have that swing space in order to start right. renovating the other elementary right. schools on a rotating basis. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So, Thank you. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Anything else on Board of Selectmen? No. Okay. Hearing none. Okay. Uh, do we have Ken Romeo sitting here? Yes, sir. I'm on the phone. Ken Romeo. Okay. Good can evening. You, can you bring us up on your yep. report, please? Sure. Uh, what you have in front of you is uh, our report, uh, which is capturing items since uh, May 4th, which was our previous report. And the first item just uh, is an overall schedule and cost update. You'll uh, get more from uh, Mark from yep. Downs directly. But uh, right now we're looking at an $18.8 million GMP, uh, which rolls in change order number 11, which includes all the CORs you guys approved last month. Right. And currently uh, Downs is still showing that they're going to complete on August 15th. Oh, really? Uh, of, yep. Yep. Uh, of significant items uh, that have been completed or are uh, upcoming, I should say, is uh, the completion of the auditorium. Again, Mark's going to speak to all these. I'll give a quick overview. Yeah, just completing interior our, our uh, demolition and abatement. Yep. Our concern mostly with, um, with colliers is do you see any problems or anything existing that's happening now that we should be aware of that could create a problem? Sure. Uh, if we uh, if you go down to uh, page two, I have uh, risk assessment. It's right. uh, And just letting you know, these things are yes. uh, the things that uh, we see as the most exposure. Again, uh, Mark will talk more about this. Downs is fully integrated and working with their subcontractors on the dust collector, along with the uh, energy recovery unit that's required for the uh, guidance suite. And then just noting that uh, additional lighting at this point would be tough to try and get. And then as uh, the fax uh, area moves, moves on, there's the potential for unknown abatement work. So that's uh, still ongoing. And then uh, furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Just uh, tracking those down and getting that ordered. I know uh, Scott has been working diligently along with uh, Andrew on that. So uh, that's another item. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit later about uh, whiteboards and the replacement thereof. In reference, and then the to only other thing. In, in total, in total, Howard, are you seeing this falling in within our budget or, or what? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, everything right now, uh, Mark has some more exposures yeah, coming up. Yeah, but, Mark, uh, I'm asking from the Collier side. Yeah. You represent us as an owner's yeah. representative. In reference yeah. to the owner's representative, do you see any major problems coming up with the budget? Uh, no, not at this point. Okay, that's what we want to know. I guess any other questions from yeah. anybody else in the committee? Lucian, no? No, no, thank you. Mike, no? Okay, all right, good. Anything else you want to report? Thank you. No. Nope. That's it. Okay, moving on. All right, cars, let's go to our big job. Henry James. I guess we'll start with uh, Henry James. Let's start with uh, Mark. Uh, let's start with what you have going on your report, if you can. Jeff, is uh, KPA in the room? Uh, Jennifer was on the line. I don't know. I don't see her, though, uh, at this point. Jennifer's on the line, right? Square is here. I am on the line. Oh, okay. I Go am ahead. having Great. trouble with some people's audio, but I can hear most of you. I'm having trouble hearing Scott for some reason. And I tried to connect through a phone, but I was getting feedback, so I'll do my best. Okay. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, so, uh, as of the publication of uh, this information last week, uh, the total anticipated GMP was just over 19 million. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll come down. We got. We'll get to your uh, page to pay you. We'll talk about that. Okay. So you don't want to talk about the project financial summary? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That, that's usually where we start. There. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, all right. So. Uh, this is all. This is all based upon the project right now being approximately 82% complete. Again, the total anticipated GMP 
uh, just over 19 million. Remaining contingency, uh, 440,500 approximately, uh, just over that. Uh, uh, trade contractor allowance uh, remaining, 707,500 uh, approximately, just under that. Uh, GMP allowances, uh, allowances remaining, uh, 568,381.40. So that's a broad overview of the uh, of the uh, total uh, financial project. summary. Yep. Okay. Uh, work completed since last meeting. Um, we're out of uh, phases three and four. Um, the uh, building department walked through today, and they're working on um, uh, a letter for us. Um, um, approving use of those spaces. Um, so we're in really good shape there. Um, coordinated further with uh, uh, Scott, all the corridors are substantially cleaned out now. Uh, we're cleaning on a regular basis. Uh, phase five corridor ceilings are substantially wrapped up. Uh, we have a, a little bit of work to do uh, as far as padding out in and around the gymnasium. Uh, the locker room abatement uh, is completed. Uh, all the rough underground in the locker rooms is done. Um, um, all the preliminary demolition in the fax wing is done. Um, a lot of progress in the guidance suite. I'm, I'm, I'm reading what you're reading uh, under work completed. You can see the abatement having been done, uh, framing, sound attenuation, uh, gypsum wallboard, hollow metal frames, rough electrical and fire protection. Uh, we also, as of this meeting, were first coded in terms of paint. Uh, so we're waiting for equipment now so we can get above ceiling and um, uh, doors and hardware. And um, uh, we'll get our flooring in after that, and we should be in really good shape. Uh, auditorium paneling is really winding down right now. It looks beautiful. Uh, you get an opportunity to stop by. Um, I go in there on occasion and uh, tie into the Bluetooth and play music. It's great. Um, uh, work in progress. Uh, masonry and MEP in the locker room. Uh, the abatement is well underway uh, in the fast wing. Uh, we've actually come out of abatement in a couple areas there, and uh, uh, we're continuing with some other uh, demolition work and uh, um, uh, rough work in the, uh, in the corridor uh, in between the two spaces there. Um, uh, we're working on the balance of the uh, auditorium mill work um, that's about 85% uh, complete, maybe closer to 90% uh, right now. Uh, auditorium seating, we're trying to get KI back on property. We do have the theatrical consultant coming on Wednesday. Um, the drapery has been installed. It looks beautiful. We're trying to get uh, that seating, uh, in the balance of the seating installed. Uh, uh, that's one of the last things that I think the theatrical consultant is going to be interested in. Um, uh, all other elements of uh, that discipline of work, I believe, are constructed. Um, painting, uh, we're, we're finishing up the floor, um, uh, touching that up, uh, as well as uh, other areas uh, throughout the auditorium. Uh, painter is in there on a regular basis right now. Uh, the auditorium drapery was in progress, but it is completed. Um, the commissioning of the mechanical and electrical systems is ongoing. Uh, we've had several meetings and uh, uh, we expect the Anselm on site tomorrow. Um, uh, guidance suite, uh, rough mechanical in progress. So uh, that's what I have to share with you um, uh, as far as uh, the WIP. Um, work to start, uh, the theatrical consultant inspection that's scheduled for this Wednesday, uh, corridor flooring, um, uh, locker room finishes, um, roughing out the MEPFP in the fax wing, and the guidance suite finishes. The guidance suite finishes have actually started uh, with the first coat of painting in there. Um, so that's what I have to share with you um, uh, regarding our progress at the property. Okay, at that point, let's, Andrew, do you have anything you want to add into that? Andrew? No, no, I don't, Dick. Okay, you haven't seen me running up, as they say? Yeah, yep, okay. I've, been, I've been, periodically I've been stopping in yeah, uh, and I do plan on going in tomorrow. I would like to see the drapery in the auditorium. I haven't seen that yet, so I'm looks looking. Great. Forward to, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Moving on. Uh, action items. Um, uh, the uh, PBC will recall COP 148. 
um, uh, that rainwater, that uh, rain leader. Um, so this is the balance of the work to uh, remove the bird's mouth, come across the face of the building, uh, down a column and out three feet to a splash block. Lucian, is that? Yeah, that's better. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it because I was concerned about that, especially coming down by the windows. Well, it's away from the window. Yeah. All right. So do we need a motion to approve that one then? So moved, Bud Kelly. Second? Second. Lucian. Lucian. Okay. All in favor of saying aye? Aye. aye. Opposed? All in favor. Okay. So we move on to the next one. Okay. That one passes. 165? Uh, 160, 162, right? Uh, by 175, Dick? I'm sorry. Um, so this is for, I'm sorry. I got it. Which okay. one are we doing? Uh, 162, right? Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is uh, uh, circuits, uh, power circuits for two BMS panels. Uh, they were not reflected on the uh, design document. Um, this was all for, uh, this work was coordinated uh, very closely uh, with CES. Um, KBA is aware. KBA want to comment on this? Where'd she go? She ran away again. We lost her. <laughs> Where'd she go? Jeff, are you aware we lost um, her? I'm you letting her? her in here. I'm sorry. She had a, must have lost connection. Uh, there she is, Jennifer. I am, I am back, and I'm sorry. I couldn't hear anything that Andy said, and I had to miss part of this. I haven't had Zoom problems, but today I had it. <laughs> so, How about this uh, proposal change order 162? Are you aware of that? Yes, let me bring up um, my notes on 162. Okay. Because we get these, they're not Colliers, signed off. Colliers is, Colliers is well aware of uh, uh, these changes that we're representing tonight, Dick, if that's helpful to you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so this is for $1,251.13. Right. We I do have um, a, a memo from from CES on this. Yeah. I'm just trying to bring it up because I had to switch places in. Um, regarding 162, um, our design intent was to use the existing BMS network, um, but due to the location and capacity of the network, we needed two new cabinets to add control. We couldn't have predicted it based on available existing conditions during design, um, even based on the wiring configuration of the existing system, we, we couldn't have anticipated that. But now that the, elect the electrical contractor is in and with new information, we unfortunately need to Why wouldn't that be picked up during design? My CES tells, tells us that they couldn't predict those conditions with the existing network during design. Um, I'm not the electrical engineer, so I can't provide you more detail than that. I apologize, but I can I can get further information. Well, it's twelve hundred bucks. It's not a heck of a lot, but the point is, you know, is this a design problem or is this a construction problem? I know that there's there's times when existing electrical conditions are not fully known because our design. Um, engineer was this made aware was this made aware when we went out for bid no they did not predict that new panels they we were not able to to assess that new panels would have been required they assumed that the existing bms could have taken this um but Lucian. they don't always have well, the, the electrical contractor can do well the problem that i have we are presented with a change order and I don't know, Jennifer is trying to justify why it's okay and whatnot, but I don't see CES's position on this. Is that $1,200 okay? 
I see a sketch that says you have to put the panel over there. Right. But, you know, CS should tell us, is the number reasonable? Yeah, $700? Usually, usually what happens, you know, you have to add control panels and you have to have power for the control panels. So... Yes, CES did review the um, proposed change order. They reviewed all the ones that are on the table tonight, um, so, and they did find that that was reasonable. We do go back and forth with um, with downs at times if we have questions or concerns about the cost being presented. But where is I usually? You know, we we see a letter or something, a memo, right? A no, contract from the there, engineer that says that the price is reasonable or something, right? There's no signature on here. That's why I'm asking because normally on the change orders, we really, you know, submitted by downs, we know that. But then normally we have an architect or an engineer sign off on it, and then we get it and we sign off on it. That's where we don't have a, you know, the architect had signed it. Rico didn't sign off on it. Okay. But you're, but you're saying it's okay. We can provide that formality. I apologize that we don't have that formality tonight for these change orders, but we can... We, that's we standard procedure. That that's, uh, Jennifer, that's standard procedure. I mean, everyone knows about that. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, your staff should know about that. I'm sure that uh, I'm surprised you, you know, now that you're looking at it, you see you haven't signed off on all of them. But so you're going to tell us whether you, your folks approve this? We have approved this one, um, but. You're okay. right. We haven't been signing off formally on the change orders that have been in front of you. We've been going back and forth with them trying to get to an agreement. Technically, we should. All right. So I have a motion to submit change order 162 in the amount of $1,251.13. Do I have a motion? So, so moved. Move. Okay. okay. That got All right. Any comments? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. All right. So approved. Moving ahead. Okay. Next one. Cop 163, RFI 177. This is for an additional light. Uh, vestibule C100. Um, not to throw you under the bus, Jennifer, but I'll, I'll allow you to speak to that, please. Yes, there there was design error in this. There was confusion on CS's part on whether the vestibule had a new or existing lighting required, and um, they did not provide the light that was necessary. Who? The ES, our, our engineers. Ferguson. They acknowledge so, so, so this speak, should it be charged back to Ferguson? No. It's out of scope. It's never shown on the construction documents. Right. Yeah, you said, it was left off. you said it was left yeah, off. Why would it be charged back to Ferguson there? If he left it off, he didn't no, cover it. it wasn't shown on the construction documents there. It was not shown in the construction document. Why wasn't it shown in the construction documents if it was required? CES did not have it on their construction documents. It was an error in the design documents. There you go. It's on the design team. There's an error in the design documents. Therefore, the, the, if there was an error in the design, the designer should be partial for it. Well, I don't know about that, Dick. I mean, it's something that we will get for nothing. It's value added to the project. So I don't think that, I mean, obviously we pay more than we would have paid at bid right. time, but I mean, it's something that we take benefit of it. You know, otherwise, Look, we, we get you like it. Okay, so you're you're approving it, Jennifer? Yes. Okay, do I have a motion to accept change order 163 in the amount of $1,578.23? So moved. Second. Go ahead. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Sounds like a good head. Okay, move ahead. Next one. Top 170, uh, PBC will recall that they tabled this matter. They were looking for yep. uh, some additional information from CES. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the additional information I have is that the pattern of the um, existing ductwork system on the second floor, the pattern was that 
with all these classrooms were, were having these diffusers. They had accounted for this new diffuser to be installed and um, come to find out that that, that wasn't an error. There was not a duct for that particular room, which was an oddity in the upper level. Um, but it is a value added. It's betterment to the air quality of that space, and we felt that it should still be included in the project. So you're saying this change order is value added? And is you're approving it? Yes. Do I have a motion to accept proposal number 170 for the amount of $1,347.37? So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. Next item. Uh, COP 177 uh, PR 12. This is a, a proposal request. Um, uh, this is uh, some work in, in server room A228. Uh, there's some cut and cap that was required behind a, an existing uh, cabinet that was unforeseen, uh, masonry infill, and an access patch. Did they cut a hole in that cabinet yeah. and just stick it right in there? I think there was a blind spot behind that cabinet. I don't think anybody ever saw that. It was, it was already stubbed out of the wall, and the masonry was open. So the yeah, cabinet went weird. That's weird. <laughs> right, but there was a cabinet concealing the condition. Um, I don't believe the cabinet had a sink or anything in it, so we didn't realize there was no. any plumbing previously, but the plumbing had already been capped in a prior time um, and was uncovered when we took out the casework. Wow. All right. Okay. Do but I have it was sticking out of the wall, and we did not want to leave it sticking out of the wall. <laughs> No. So. Motion for proposal number 177 for the amount of $1,042.95. So I hear a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Okay. Next item. Uh, COP 178. Um, yep. The two uh, display cases at the media center uh, were delivered with were delivered with lights, and um, they were never shown to be illuminated. And um, uh, HJMS uh, uh, expressed an interest in illuminating them, uh, so we put this together. This is a design issue. There is miscoordination between our specifications, the product for the display case, and coordinating that with the electrical requirements. So power needed to be added to actually use the lights we specified with the display case. A motion for a change order 178 in the amount of $810.28. So moved. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Okay, moving on. That takes care of us in uh, change top. orders? No. I'm sorry? Top 179. Top 179. Oh, 179. This, yep. this door uh, opening A115, when it was demolished, uh, there was a circuit in that wall that had to be removed. Um, this was all coordinated with CES. Um, when that circuit was removed, it took a couple rooms out downstream. Uh, so that circuit had to be reworked, and uh, that's what this uh, matter addresses. So we have COP 179 for the amount of $720.47. So we have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Ryan Second. Burns. Okay. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Looks like it gets carried. Okay. Next one. 180. Um, 180. Um, uh, this is an additional access panel in the upper level of the B2 stairwell uh, as we got in there working. Um, uh, we're putting in that rated ceiling in there. Uh, we have an access panel in there, but we realized that there was a, um, a, a junction box for an exterior lighting circuit uh, that was too far away from that panel and we couldn't bury it. Uh, so this addresses a new uh, fire rated access panel in that position. Okay. 
Change order 180, the amount of 18670. Do I have a motion to carry? So moved. Second. Second. Any further questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Okay, 184. Next. Uh, 184. Uh, this is uh, this is half time uh, for carpentry in March of 2020. Um, that uh, DCC authorized uh, GDF to facilitate to complete the blocking um, uh, over the course of one weekend, so that uh, the first arrival of the um, uh, of the uh, um, uh, 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 paneling in the auditorium could be installed uh, sequentially. This is no cost to us at this point. There's no addition to the contract. No, it's zero. It's zero. It's out of the contingency. Okay. No, um, we asked motion, him, we asked motion. Him to join us on a Saturday. Motion to carry. Don't move. Don't move. Second. All in favor? Doesn't cost anything. Aye. Aye. Okay. Approved. Next. Uh, top 185, uh, this is an additional wall um, uh, that was um, um, scope. Uh, deemed necessary in B107. We have a similar circumstance on, on 186. We'll do one at a time. Um, Jennifer, would you like to speak to this? Or? Uh, give me a break. Sir, in COP 185, um, there was existing casework on one of the walls, and when the casework was removed, the finish of the existing wall was unacceptable, and we had not previously provided any covering for that finish to, to get us a better finish. So this COP adds um, a referring to that wall, new gypsum board, to clean it up. Okay, so they are proven it, architect? Yes. Yep. Okay. The motion to approve a room, uh, I'm sorry, 185, the amount of $2,989.92. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three, four. Okay, so moved. Okay, 186. Uh, 186, similar situation. Um, uh, this is additional wall system in B216. Yes, KBA um, has reviewed this as well and approved it for your review and, and for your approval, but it is the same situation. There is um, spurring required on two walls um, due to, uh, in this case, it wasn't casework that re was removed, but there was electrical um, junction boxes on two of the walls, and we wanted to be able to bury those in a new wall. So. And this was not in the original contract, in the original drawings? No, the frame was not, no. Okay, we need a motion for a COP 186, the amount of $3,995.94. $955.94. I'm sorry? $3,955.94. Yeah, that's what I said. I thought I said that. I'm sorry. Okay, yes. The motion? So move, so move. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor, <laughs> saying aye. 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 Okay, so carried. All right, move on to 187. Uh, COP 187, uh, this is for uh, hot water supply and return piping that was concealed in a masonry wall in the locker room. Uh, once that wall was demolished, we realized that it had to be uh, relocated. And uh, this uh, it was done on a time and material basis. Uh, the work is complete. We had to facilitate it. And uh, the, you have the backup with the labor and the material. And this was coordinated with um, uh, CES and uh, both uh, Colliers and, and um, uh, KBA are aware. Collier? We agree now. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, Jennifer. Hi. We approve okay. the amount. Approve it. All right. Collier, you have yeah. any comments? No, we reviewed it in the field and uh, reviewed the uh, tickets. Everything's in alignment with the contract requirements. 
I have a motion to approve COP 187, the amount of $2,984.58. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Two, three, four. Okay, so move. Next, 189. Uh, 189 is um, RFI 193. It addresses a, a power circuit for cabinet um, um, uh, heater unit number three, um, out of scope, $334.72. Um, so actually, this is a this is a um, this is a, a far more extensive circuit. This circuit is probably valued in excess of $2,000. Uh, but as a result of uh, uh, the, the construct of it, um, uh, the timing, how it, how it went down, how it was constructed, um, we got Ferguson to agree to a value of $334.72. KBA approved to what? Okay. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving on. Next one, 191. Um, more corridor lighting. Um, it, actually, the, the RFI addresses E101 and A104, but the lighting is actually uh, uh, designed under this RFI response for A104, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Jennifer. That's correct. So yeah, this so wasn't was an original one. design either? There was one light fixture mixed in the design, and there was a, a there was a dark area in the corridor, so we needed to add a light fixture. Any comments anywhere? Is there a motion to approve COP one ninety one, the amount of seven hundred dollars seven oh five sixteen. So moved, Ryan Burns. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, moving on. COP 194. COP 194 addresses, uh, you'll read the PBC will recall our discussions regarding progress cleaning. Uh, this is out of the general requirements, um, uh, no increase to the GMP. Um, this will allow us to continue uh, progress cleaning throughout June, and it's been incredibly beneficial. I would hope that. Uh, Andrew Colliers uh, uh, would speak to the level of cleanliness um, uh, in this building right now. Comments? Andrew? Yep. <laughs> no? Okay. All right. Um, I've, I've, in the times I've been in the building, um, I've really been sticking recently to the cafeteria and that fax area moving materials. So I cannot speak, uh, Mark, I can't speak to the level of cleanliness right now, um, in particular for any of those other areas. I, I was in this weekend and, and did a pretty thorough walk around. Um, and I would say the main two corridors have been cleaned pretty well, like ready for teachers to come back in and and uh, and get back into the rooms next Monday. I, I feel comfortable with that. So I'd, I'd say that those areas looked pretty good and, and ready to go. All right, this is along, no change. And this is Ken with Colliers, along with the exterior too. There was a lot of attention paid to that. Yep. Okay. And this is no, there's no cost to us on this. So this is just a uh, zero at this point. Yeah. So, yeah, no, no increase in the GMP. That's correct. Yeah. We have approval of COP 194. Motion. So moved. Second. Ryan Burns, second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, moving forward. 197. Yeah, thank, thank you for that. Uh, COP 197 uh, marker board installation. Uh, this was an additional board that was requested. Um, we had two surplus boards uh, under a, a ASI 036. Um, we did install this board, uh, the labor to do that, 35615. We have one board remaining in reserve. This is out of scope? Yes, it is. Where did it come from? At the if you read the first bullet there. At the request of... At, at, 
at the request of HJMS and Burke EVA, install a single marker board in room A105. Okay. Yeah, you got a comment? No. Uh, I believe I believe this may have come from Scott, right? Scott, was this your request to install your request board? Yes. Um, there there wouldn't have been a board in the room, so we, we, we needed to we needed to put that in there. Okay, well, it changes these. Got to be careful when we change these kind of from design to additions because the contract. When we go out contract at a certain price, we keep adding to it. It makes it makes it much worse for us. But we have a motion now for a cop one ninety seven. The amount of three hundred fifty six dollars and fifteen cents. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Two. Okay. Moving forward on one ninety eight. Uh, 198 addresses um, additional uh, wet pipe protection that wasn't anticipated um, in the stair B um, ceiling. Um, this is a result of the uh, rated ceiling having to be dropped um, uh, um, uh, as, uh, because of the uh, framing, the structural framing in that area. Uh, there was a, a beam in there that required the whole ceiling to come down. And subsequently, we had to modify the wet pipe system to satisfy uh, both the um, uh, the rated ceiling and the uh, acoustical ceiling below it. This Jennifer, was also more. Yes, I just want to comment that um, just so you're aware, it wasn't rework so much. The existing there were existing sprinklers in there for the from the prior project but those are the ones that needed to be modified to accommodate a slightly lower ceiling. That was the first part were, of project number two? It was from phase two, yes. And we approved the amount. Why wasn't it done in phase two? We didn't need the rated ceiling in phase two. Um, the rated ceiling was because of the auditorium addition that, that came about in this phase. Gotcha. Um, so generally, the auditorium addition required the popped up snow roof, and we needed to rate the stair, give some separation between the stair and that popped up snow load roof. Um, right. And that didn't, that wasn't part of the phase two project at that time. We couldn't foresee that. Gotcha. Okay, we have a motion for a proposal 198 in the amount of $1,019.11. So moved. Second. Comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving ahead <laughs> to 201. Uh, this is a contingency item, no increase in the GMP, um, uh, further coordination of painting in April, um, such that they're not interfering with the work of other trades. Right. Okay. Do we need approval for a COP 201? Can I have a motion to pass, please? Motion move forward. So moved. So moved. Second? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Nothing costs us anything, so we'll move ahead. Okay. COP 203? Uh, COP 203, um, these are new uh, uh, radiation grills for the fin tube. Fin, new grills for the fin tube radiation at the media center booths. Uh, when we look at the design, uh, we note that the, the uh, fin tube in that area was always designed to be exposed. Um, and ultimately, it became enclosed, and um, these grills were required. Uh, I was optimistic that I could get this work for free. Um, the contractor wanted uh, over $900 to do this work, and uh, we arrived at... Uh, just over 190 some odd dollars, a very modest markup for downs on it. But um, it, it, is, it is out of scope. Uh, Jennifer, I know that Jennifer can speak to it um, um, in more detail. Jennifer? Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, there was a, a coordination issue regarding the fin tube radiation along one of the walls in the media center. There's a coordination issue between CES and KDA. Um, we had thought that CES was supplying, um, was enclosing and supplying grills for the um, 
to the spin tube radiation, but in fact, they thought we were supplying grills and our details and that we had detailed it properly. Um, so we actually, um, due to Mark's work, I think we, we got pretty lucky here with that, that amount of, but with that cost and still being able to enclose this radiation to provide the grills that were needed. So thank you, Mark. Do I have a motion to approve 203 in the amount of $200.37? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so carried. Okay, moving on. Uh, in scope and out of scope totals are, are provided uh, for uh, the work that was approved today. Uh, you can see that. Um, orders of magnitude. Uh, uh, pending revisions, um, the demolition of the um, swing space, uh, COP 125 was uh, done by uh, Downs' personnel on site. Uh, so that was a zero value that became void and that, um, that total order of magnitude was decreased slightly. Um, I believe this is representative of uh, uh, all of the work now associated with this matter. Okay. Uh, May requisition uh, for your approval. Uh, hold on, we'll take care of that when we get your when we get to your invoice. Okay. Critical items. Uh, critical items. Uh, yep. We we continue to carry through um, the discussion regarding COVID nineteen. Uh, however, we're we're uh, we remain very optimistic out here. We're fully staffed on site. We have good good uh, 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 representation from the subcontractor base. And uh, we're moving right along, so um, I feel pretty comfortable. Good. Um, the cottle wall panels uh, have been installed. Uh, it was a critical item. I'm just letting you know that uh, it's done. Uh, that work is behind us. Um, the next two items address um, uh, the duct work um, that the um, uh, the PVC requested be uh, pressure tested. And um, uh, a report has been extended to all of you. Uh, Jeff did that recently. Um, uh, so it did not hold pressure. Um, so that's been reviewed by uh, CEF. And um, they're not with us. Um, they're not with us. Where are they? <laughs> Dick, there was that a memo. I'm aware of. We did send a memo out late today that summarized CES's position and understanding of that report. You should have it via email. And I apologize for coming in so late. I do not have it. Jennifer, I don't know if you want to summarize that. Can you summarize it, somebody? Jennifer, would you be able to do that? Sorry, I muted myself for part of Mark's, <laughs> Mark's report. So um, the... The existing duct work was then tested. You know, it showed signs of leakage during the test. Um, the duct work can't hold the pr hold pressure. Right. And there were there were some gaps, um, but there were no large gaps or holes visible. CES also attended the um, the testing, and they witnessed this in the field. Um, so their feeling was because there were no large holes or gaps visible that there are there's likely a large quantity of smaller gaps and holes um, contributing to the leakage. Um, they had recommended that we look at a product called AeroSeal that could internally it it, it could internally seal the ductwork and um, they've had good success with this product. It can. It can deal with small gaps. Um, there's also some pipe penetration through the existing ductwork that was um, certainly not helping the leakage situation. But those they they did comment that these pipes that are existing that go through the ductwork that it is code compliant in this to to leave them in place, and we still could seal the ductwork and. Um, you know, it provides some closure of keeping the pipe penetration. There are also wire penetrations passing through the duct in one location, and they recommend for that condition, because that's a code issue, that's, that's not okay to leave that way, 
Um, they are recommending that this existing wiring be installed outside of the ductwork. Um, we have not given any direction to do any of this at this point to seal the ductwork with, with the product or to correct the wire penetration, for instance. Um, it's up for further. I'm sorry they couldn't be here tonight. Um, Mike Bouchard is is the project manager from CES that right. was there on, but he did just have a baby. Well, not he had a baby, but his wife had a baby a week ago. And okay. um, Jennifer, Jennifer, stop saying that. Stop saying that Mike Bouchard had a baby. That. Yeah, I keep saying that. So congratulations, <laughs> okay. to but um, we were we were able to connect with Mike, but he was not able to be here at the meeting tonight. Um, what, what, how do we handle this problem? Well, um, it's an existing condition. We don't know for sure if we install the new exhaust fans that are planned, the four exhaust fans, if there's so much leakage where we're going to have an issue, um, it's assumed that there would be. Right. We this can get pricing. This whole project. Right. Um, we could get pricing to install a product such as AeroSeal to seal the, the ductwork um, for your consideration, but we don't have that, that pricing yet. So it was just, it was something we wanted to discuss. I did also ask the yes, they were involved in a study that KBA was not a part of. During the beginning of this design, um, they had done a, a different study with the town, with the school district, to look at um, air conditioning, the various schools, not just Henry James. Um, they were asked, could that be achieved? How would that happen? And um, I do recall that, so I wanted to ask the yes if, let's say that spray comes to the school and that perhaps um, brings on a further project to air condition this building fully. Or maybe for another reason, the district decides to air condition Henry James. Um, would that impact a decision that would be made about the existing ductwork? Um, because if you are going to invest some money in the existing ductwork, um, I just, you know, I wonder if it would for nothing if you move forward with a with an air conditioning project. Um, so CES did comment and said that when they did the study previously, the other schools um, had gone forward with um, split DX cooling units with wall mounted evaporators, and um, there were no changes made to the structure, the ductwork, or other infrastructure at those other facilities. Um, and generally, that's cost-effective, least intrusive, and it would have no impact on the existing exhaust ductwork if we were to do the same thing, at, if you were to do the same thing at Henry James in the future. Um, so I think that's, that's good news. Um, at least that doesn't weigh into the conversation so much. I mean, certainly there are other ways to cool Henry James um, with air handling units on the roof. They they did comment if for some reason that other direction, that other way of cooling Henry James were to be done, then existing exhaust, exhaust ductwork would likely be removed. So anything you're investing in it now would be affected. They just Based on their previous study, it didn't seem like that would be the direction that it would go. And based on what was done in another school, it does not I, seem... I, Jennifer, unfortunately, we have a project now which we're supposed to be doing complete. In reference to saying this could be done in the future, this could be done in the future, that could be done. There's a lot of things going to be done in the future. They're talking about maybe adding on to Henry James in the future. Right, I mean, right. Uh, this, this would fit in very well if we added on to Henry James as part of the project. But this, you know, where are we with what we're doing today and what has to be done today to get this job done and complete? And it appears this this has come up a couple of times now. And Lucian, are you there? Is this, 
Remember any of this? Yeah, yeah, but I guess they have to seal the duct. Yeah. So they should they prepare something the... and get a proposal and for us to consider. I would say that they need to seal the two pipe penetrations first, recheck the pressure at that point, and then you can use the aerosol stuff to plug yeah. up all the small leaks. Right. Um, and then in one of the pipe penetration pictures, we've got a wire problem. Wire you can't problem. have wires hanging on those pipes. Right. Something melts yeah. and you start electrifying everything. Somebody's going to get electrocuted. You so that, that wasn't even mentioned, which kind of irons me a little bit. Right. Um, and then we have, take, we have to take the wires the outside of the, hang on. We have to take the okay. wires outside of the duct just to be coated anyway. So you might as well just take care of this problem I think we need to take right this right part of it and hold off on to until we get more information and more detail on how this is going to be done and done properly. It appears that uh, we should really have CES in here and tell them, look, you're looking at this thing kind of backwards. Not what I was going to say, but <laughs> A backwards. <laughs> uh, there's something wow. that's not right here at all. Um, I mean, the project inherited this exhaust duct work. It wasn't, we were told that things, that even the exhaust fans were functional at the time, and maybe they were, but they're not now. Um, yeah, that's, 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 you know, that's you know, going back to the Board of Education, that's uh, uh, normal uh, equipment change or update or you know, maintenance compared to changing in a project mm -hmm. that we have already assigned money for it. This was not right. applied in the original project. This was not applied in our original budget. This was not applied in the contract. And now all of a sudden right. we're going to start doing all this major repairing. I mean, uh, it's more of a, of a uh, an Android look, look toward you at this. I know you're new at this, so you don't know. But this basically is a maintenance project. It sounds like more than a, than a construction project. Jeff, help. Yeah, I think in all fairness, you know, looking back at the original scope, Jennifer, and I don't want to speak for you, is that, you know, the project was over budget as they originally scoped it, and some things had to be pared back. And as mm -hmm. Jennifer said, I think it was the exhaust system and the fans were, you know, represented as being functional at that time. And that's why they weren't considered as part of the project. Mm. Great. Yeah. Well... Interesting. I, I, I have a couple of questions. Lucky, on where do you go with this one? <laughs> board of, I mean, Board of Finance, I mean, they're not going to jump all over onto something like this. You know, it wasn't part of the project originally. We're adding to the project now as a, you know, something that wasn't picked up. It was picked up before we started during the design or during the energy engineering concept. Then you can say, okay, we look at it later, then, then this is later. But that never was said back then. It was never said. All of a sudden now, toward the end of the contract, we're getting hit with this. And I'm not blaming Downs and not blaming anyone else, but saying, you know, somewhere along the line, we're getting, you know, you know what? I, I'm a little concerned here as to how we handle this. Lucian, you got any comments? Well, it's, uh, you know, we have to fix, first of all, it's an existing condition. Nobody knew about it, and we have to fix it. So you ignore it, and then the town pays from a different budget, or we pay now during the construction, and that's the end of it. The thing that concerns me, the CS has to come to come uh, to to bring some recommendations, and then down to price it, and that will be when because they are planning to finish the job by August. Yeah. So this has to move pretty fast. Okay, well, I guess that's where we leave it. And uh, Andrew and Mike, uh, you got Mark, you got to get back to uh, uh, CES to get this thing uh, designed and get it out for bid and see what it is, and come back to us with it. Hopefully, can that yeah, be done, by, next, can that be done by? Can that be done within a month? Mark, I can't speak for CES's design. Uh, once we once we get something. Um, uh, you know, we'll get right on it and um, see if we can present something to you uh, next month. Uh, it is noted that this whole issue has been uh, with the PVC, uh, with our team here, this, this global team for several months. I mean, as a matter of fact, you folks authorized the, we questioned what we were doing here last month when you authorized the, um, uh, the approval of the new exhaust fan. So, yeah, we didn't um, know this was part of it. 
This wasn't meant to uh, Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Oh, no, never mind. Absolutely. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, we're doing nothing tonight on this, on this part of this uh, thing until we get a recommendation from CES to Downs. Downs goes out and gets us a price and brings it back to us for approval. Anybody agree with that? Sounds yes. like Hey, I have a couple of questions. Go ahead. So the duct work is separate from the exhaust fans not working. Was there action taken on that? No. Is there any action going to be taken on that? Because it doesn't really matter if the ducts got holes in it if the fans aren't working. Well, that's where we're issued. That's that's where they're all they're looking at that. We've been talking about that duct work, I assume, the same one for months now, not just last month, the month before. It's going down before the window. We kind of approved that tonight, did we not? Dick, if I can speak, um, Mike, the, uh, the the exhaust fans did get approved at a prior meeting. So those are okay. in progress of being retrofitted. Um, we just felt with the timing of it, you know, we had to get going on it with, with the lead time on the fans. And that yeah, we would understood that I just wanted to confirm that. So it, it sounds like the fans will be done. Um, and, and then we'll have an opportunity to reevaluate what, if anything, is done with the ductwork. Is it possible right. to get a balancing report after those fans are installed to see if there's any action needed? That's a good point. Don't know. Yeah, I wrote that, Michael. Um, I, you know, your and Lucian's um, comment is welcome. I wrote in the last bullet. Um, I write, the fact that the duct would not hold pressure may not preclude airflow from each room under exhaust. Um, do, you, do you think that's an accurate statement? I mean, I'm, uh, we, we could price up doing anything. Once those fans get dropped in and we um, start them up, we may recognize exhaust, uh, 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 a reasonable amount of exhaust for the time being. You know, I, I, I don't know. know that. Wouldn't see yes, know that, and tell you that, hey, if the fan does this and this happens here, you're going to have more than enough uh, pressure? Well, I don't know how it's they, not really CES's position to decide the whole, how much yeah. money should be spent. I'm not talking about the money. I'm talking about the answer to his question. Would it not hold the pressure to preclude airflow? Well, that's what CES said. They said you can either seal it from the inside and make it perfect or do nothing. So, that you know, it's not their money to spend. It's up to us to evaluate the different options. Correct, but it doesn't cost us anything to get the price. So we right. have a price to fix it, and then we have the exhaust fan. The exhaust fan can exhaust what we want or not, and like, then we make a decision. Do you right. want to spend $1,000? Yeah, $1, and, and, and they, got, I agree. they got the request to price it, you know, four hours ago. So I'm sure the yeah. Downs will work on that. Yeah. All right, so we're not going to do anything tonight until, until next month that we get all that information in front of us. Right. Correct. It, it, is there an estimated install date for the fans, or is it still too early? They were just approved. the The fans are um, six weeks. They were just they just came back um, from submittal review by CES, uh, along with the ERV for the guidance suite and the dust collector equipment and duct work. They were just returned recently. So again, we're about six weeks on those fans. Okay, so it sounds like at the at the best we'd get a balancing report right before project turnover. Right. That's what it sounds like. Well, and don't forget, Michael. Uh, um, substantial completion is the fifteenth. Final is the twenty-first. So of September. So to the extent that we're you know we we're, we're I'm just I'm just trying to be helpful there. That's all. I hear you. I'm just trying to be helpful. Yeah, just trying to be helpful. That's all. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I the aero seal is going to cost a portion. And there's no guarantees so. with it. They won't turn. They won't. It fills up to a 586 hole. You know, so you'll look all around. You'll do the best you can to close up whatever you have, have it under 5 eighths of an inch. You miss something, that stuff's just going to fly right out of it. It will. That's right. Was there any scope of duct sealing in the base, or this is all existing to remain duct work? All existing to remain. Huh. So the, the patching and the fixing of the wire, is that all done on a ticket? 
You know, in, in less, unless we can get a good indication from the designers uh, where we're going to cut and reroute and we could give you a firm fixed price, uh, you've got pipe going through that stuff too. Um, it was suggested to me that it's uh, fire suppression piping, but I, I'm not fire protection piping, but I'm not sure about that. I'm, I'm, I'm personally, I'm not sure about that. I have to get Bruce, eyes can you throw something on this? Well, I don't, I'm not concerned about piping. I'm concerned about the wires. Yeah, I'm right. that, that's a concern. The wires probably they are plastic and whatnot, and that's a no-no. Whoever did that did a big mistake. So at least the wires, they can take them out, seal the holes, and put the wires outside the ductwork. Um, we can we can work on that. Um, I don't know that that's uh, uh, you know that you know if you're willing to allow us to do that on a time and material basis, uh, we can meet with uh, Ferguson in the field, maybe with Colliers when they're on site to protect the owner's interest, review the scope of work, and uh, try to come to some form of a reasonable agreement and proceed yep. on a TNM basis and get and get that out of there for you. Yeah, I think that's the only way to go, right? I, yeah, I don't see any other yeah, way. I, to do. I think the okay. same should be done for some ceiling other than just metallic tape. Right. I think if somebody got up there and spent a day with some, you know, duct sealant, it would probably go a long way in the areas that are exposed. Any other comments, anybody? I think we just have to wait to get a report back and for our next monthly meeting and go from there. That's all I can say at this point. Well, Dick, do you want them to move on the wiring, though? That's going to happen no matter what. I know it's going to happen no matter what, but we know what it's going to cost. Well, that's something yeah. that he's offering to, to look into for us. Yeah, so I'm saying we need to look into it and see what it costs. But we, we can't move any of this until we get a cost on it. Right, but we need to give them the go-ahead, don't we? Well, we're telling them to go ahead and get a cost. So, I mean, I think we need to find out what, you know, at least get an estimate so we know what we're talking about. Well, I think well, the, the question, I think you, you was being proposed was do it on a T&M, not do it on a fixed price, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, Lucia, I didn't hear you. No, it was proposed to do it on a T&M, and I think that's yeah. a reasonable proposal. Yeah. Colliers is there, is there to protect us, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can go out there and review that scope, absolutely. So then do we need to make a motion to authorize Downs to proceed to correct item three of CES's report on a T&M basis? I would item say three specifically pertains to only the wire penetration. Only the wire mm -hmm. penetrates. Yeah, yeah. We probably should put a uh, not to exceed on it just to make sure we have some kind of control. Go ahead. No idea where it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a good point. Not to exceed. Uh, yeah, but do we know what, what where we should go for what not to exceed what? I don't know. <laughs> what, what do we put in for a number? Well, That's I mean, eight hours plus material and markups not going to be over a thousand dollars. Mark, well, well, we're going to, we're going to look at the work in the field, and we'll consult with Colliers and see if we can come up with some order of magnitude, and we'll report that back to you. And if it's approved, we can proceed. Right. But is it stuff that you need to work on over this next month? I don't want to hold this repair up. I'm going to be, I'm going to be in the, I'm here. I'm here every day. Yeah, here, there. Um, this, this is obviously important to you folks. I, I hear you. So I will get into the field tomorrow. Ken, when, do, when are you out next, Ken? Thursday. Thursday. All right. So on Thursday, Ken, we'll be ready to uh, discuss some um, resolve with you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. we, we need to vote tonight on the approval. Is, is the point is we need to vote tonight on the approval um, of the to do the work on a TNM. I just think we should put some not to exceed. I don't know what what's reasonable. What 
three thousand dollars you know could possibly I think we be... need to get in a call get a number from them first then come back and give them the approval of tnm until then we don't know mm -hmm. so i don't think we should give anything is this something we could do in a number from interim? Them versus from us sorry is this something we can do an interim uh, uh vote via email or something on the yeah. item just to get a move in we can do it that way we've done that before yes I don't yeah, know. we can approve it contingent on getting an order of magnitude from Downs before yeah. our next meeting. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Okay. So leave it at that. Downs will get back to us ASAP and we'll get it out to you folks. And you folks come back and say, yeah, we agree. Fair enough. Is that good, Mark? Agree? I hear nobody. <laughs> Yeah, work down is good to go. Yeah, absolutely. Down okay. is good to go. I can help you. I can begin that this week. Okay. Thank you. When do you think you might have a good answer for us? Thursday. Thursday, <laughs> Friday. Mark? You know, I, I want to, I need to check Ferguson's availability. I need the project manager from Ferguson. So let's see, what time is it right now? It's 8.13. We'll, we'll conclude this meeting shortly. I'll give Nick Mercantino a call right away, and I'll see if he'll pick up. If he does, All right. I'll try so to say It's going to happen within the next week. It's going to happen within the next week and a half. So we get in the next Wednesday or so I get a hold of you. Bonds and go from there. And so we all agreed to do that. Is that correct? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. How do we, do we need to make a formal movement on that? No, 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 we all agree okay. to do it. So Jane Green person, so we're all set to move forward as we have in the past. Hey, Dick, okay. uh, if, you, if I could break in, uh, this might be a good point to talk about um, some potential to install some marker boards and tack boards that we had talked about briefly at one of the other meetings and only bring yeah. it up because of time, you know, time is of the essence. Anyway, um, just want to say I love you, and if you don't mind, I'll give Someone's you a call. Someone's not on mute. Somebody's got, 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 I love you. I'm just patient, but anyways. So All right, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to have maybe Ken from, Ken from Colliers to talk to him a little bit, and Scott Baker might want to say a few words. Yeah, Scott, that was yeah. you, yeah. Connecting to audio. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so uh, th this is Ken with uh, Colliers. So uh, if you'll recall, I think it was about uh, two, maybe three meetings ago, we discussed the potential of replacing some marker boards that are in areas that are not being uh, worked on at this time. And these are marker boards that were, you know, re removed from the project along with the rooms uh, early on uh, in the design process. So there's a value management, value engineering exercise that went on and removed uh, marker boards in select rooms that weren't being touched. And uh, I know Scott spent some time and has gone through and evaluated and taken a look at them. And Mark was kind enough, along with uh, Jennifer and her team, to put together a preliminary design. And uh, Mark was able to give us a magnitude cost on these uh, replacement of these boards and we're talking about uh, 67 marker boards and tack boards and the uh, magnitude price is coming in around $100,000 and that's without abatement so it's uh, something that we definitely wanted to talk to you about because of the uh, the time crunch that we are looking at uh, you know if we waited till next month and we had a 100% hard number uh, we definitely wouldn't be able to get the work done over the summer. So with that, Scott, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to offer as far as uh, from your perspective. Sure. You know, um, so this was something we looked at. Obviously, I wasn't um, principal when we were doing the initial design. Um, and when we were, you know, when I found out we have like a bunch of rooms where they're brand new floors, the walls are painted beautifully, there's new lighting, and then the marker boards are I have lots of pictures. I mean, I could share my screen, um, but there's like tape to do on them. They're fuzz like boards are fuzzy and, and you can't erase them anymore because there's left left behind 
Barker on them. Two of these brand new rooms, and then the one thing that is a, a teaching tool is still old. The thing the kids are looking at every day, the teachers are going to teach, um, is, is antiquated. And I just, I can't imagine looking at a, a parent on open, open house saying, wow, we did this whole renovation and the board that the kids are learning from is hard to even see. Um, and a lot of the, a lot of the um, bulletin boards are cracked and pulling away from the wall. So when I, when I inquired about it first. Yeah, have you talked um, to the board of, have you talked to the original board of education about this? I mean, I've, I've asked why, you know, that was pulled out of the project to, be, to begin with. But I guess what had happened, Dick, is that the rooms, those rooms were pulled out of the project entirely. Right. And then, and then as an added, we, we said, okay, we'll do the floors. And then we said, okay, we'll do the lighting. And then we said, okay, we'll do the, the painting, but never looked at the, the boards themselves. And one of the reasons they didn't look at the boards is the asbestos cost. How does that look in the budget, Mark? So we came up with a solution of mounting with some furring over the existing boards so you can bring these rooms to a point where they look really complete and, and look like, you know, look like the other rooms. What kind of cost are you talking about, Mark? Do you know offhand? Um, yeah, I have a firm fixed price right now on the material. Um uh, we're looking at just over a hundred thousand dollars for that entire scope, but you know we we really have to get back in and um, and and scrutinize everything. You know, um, it's 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 odd stuff because each board is different. Right. You know, you're you're not. Yeah, I won't bore you with the details. They're not, they're not all the same size as I remember. No, they're right. not. They're not. And they're all different conditions in terms of how many boards are laminated, um, how many boards we're going over, how we're attaching, how we're finishing. Um, there's a Jennifer, little bit involved. Were you part of this there. at all before? Excuse me? Were you part of this before at all? This brought up before? So I do want to clarify something that um, very early in the project, KDA was told that the project needed to address the science room, the, the auditorium, the media center, the technology wing, the locker room. Um, there was very clear definition of what we needed to do right. as far as scope things. And then, in addition, there were things like, and we're going to make sure the whole building is sprinklered, and we're going to put new lighting in the classroom. Um, Little by little, there were as to the project, such as, and these were some of these things were alternates, in fact, because we didn't know that we could take on the cost of right. things like painting those other classrooms that right. weren't science rooms that didn't need to be reconfigured. So there were alternates there were paint or flooring. So we never actually had in our KDA scope, I just wanted to clarify this for people. Right. We didn't value engineer out the boards. They were never on the document to do the boards. We were, <laughs> so so when you, in, we realized early on and discussed with Burke, and I even have email correspondence with him, we said, we said, we're getting interference from Jeff. You know what that's from? Okay, go ahead, Jennifer. I'm sorry. Sure. <laughs> some of these in these classrooms because um, there's some flooring issues in these classrooms. We're, we're doing some abatement. While we're abating portions of these classrooms, do you want to also abate the boards and replace and put new boards in? Um, or put new boards on top of the old boards to bring them up a level, right? Um, because unfortunately, it isn't a renovation standard project where it's renovated as new, where we're touching everything. Um, that kind of project would have had a different performance. Um, so we were very limited in our scope. In the direction that we got from Burke back in September 2018, we would like to leave the existing What is that, what is that back noise? I, it's not mine. Um, if everyone so tries to, to mute, it might help Jennifer's um, 
sound. Go ahead. I'm only on, I'm only on one device and I'm, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I'm not, I don't know. All right. <laughs> so, my, my, um, my question is, if we're talking a hundred thousand dollars, how does that fit within our budget? I mean, the problem is, it wasn't part of our scope to start with, Scott. And all of a sudden, we keep getting all these additions to things. And the board of finance, you know, number one could be on this, but you know, has this been approved by the board of education to do this stuff? I don't know who has that approval but the board of education should be the one to be looked at then you should go back to the superintendent and let them you know matt and them should be looking at it andrew what's your thought all right so um i'm in agreement with scott that however we however we found ourselves in this position we are here now yep. and if there is a way if there is a way to address this we really are compelled to do that um, well, I know not for bid. We came in with a number for a bid. And the number that we have for the bid is just to take care of everything in the project. If there's anything added to the project has got to fit within the budget that we have. We have no idea what this amount is and whether it's going to fit in the budget. And I understand that's that. Go back, that's got to go back to your board. Uh, Rich, you said something? Rich Cortez? Cortez. Yeah. I, you so, I was just going to say, this isn't part of our scope. We can't just oh. willy-nilly throw it in. If you want this to be part of the scope, have the Board of Ed say, yes, we want you to do this. And it can only be if it fits within the budget, budget which we're not sure course. after listening about this duct and all the other stuff that's happening right now. So that it's not right. that I'm unsympathetic. Right. It's just it wasn't in the numbers. It wasn't considered. So wasn't Board of Ed has to approve it, and we have to have the money to do it. Right. whether it's through leftover from this project or more money from the board of finance, which I don't think you're going to get. Or for the board of education. Or Yeah. Well, if they can reprioritize too, but uh, I'm, yeah, I mean, I don't, we don't know. So that's, yeah. Not, I mean, I think this is obviously only in consideration if it fits within the budget. I don't know how we determine that. Um, we got to come up with a number of price. Yeah. Well, it's about a hundred thousand dollars. You're done using your allowances, talk. right? I'm sorry? I said, Mark, you're done using your allowances, right? Mark's not using his allowances. What do you mean? Um, so we have, so if you go to the top of, to answer this question, if you go to the top of page one, the financial report, uh, you folks can see what is currently in reserve on this project. So under the construction manager's contingency, there's uh, in excess of $440,000. Under the trade contractor's allowances, there's in excess of $707,000. In terms of the GMP allowances, there's in excess of $568,000. That's so what's in reserve currently under, based under on the framework that, we got of $100,000, we can spend it if you want to add it to the project. But we got to have somebody got to tell us to add it to the project. We just don't do it because the field decides to do it. The Board of Education got back and said, we're going to add this to the project. Please take this out of the project cost. So would that have normally been Burke if he was in, or is that Matt Curtis, or is that the Board of Ed? Who, who is that? Board of Ed would, would automatically give us that at this point, authorize us to spend the money that you have in the budget, spend it. I think Burke would have brought it to Matt Curtis, and it would have been discussed. I don't know what happens on that side with the Board of Ed. It's if they vote or if Matt just says, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I don't know how to about it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Somebody said something. We got cut out. Yeah, Jennifer, Jennifer, I just wanted to say, I, I believe you told me that the, this is consistent with the ed specs that were approved too, originally. Or, um, or the not original a, do talk about classroom renovations. So I think that I'm glad you brought this up. So according to the original ed specs, I think that this could be considered classroom renovations and that the state would consider it part of the project. That's the key. Just with regard to ed specs, but there's also a document that we created right before bid when we got approval from the state to go to bid. It's a, it's a scope letter um, that the state requires, and we have reviewed it with Burke, 
He went over it. It's pretty detailed on what is included in the project, even alternate. And we're told that if it's not in that scope letter, then you don't get reimbursement for it. If we see a change order come in and it's not in that scope, forget about it. It might be a bit of a stretch to say it's in that scope because certainly when we went to bid, it was it was never in our scope. So we we never had it. Um, I can't guarantee reimbursement of it. And certainly we can't guarantee they're going to reimburse it. You may be looking at a straight change order without reimbursement mm-hmm. that exceeds seven hundred thousand dollars. It is possible. I think we need to look into that in more detail. Yeah, Dick, it sounds like there's two action items that we need somebody to address before we can even bring this up again in our meetings. One is the Board of Ed approval on the scope, and uh, the second is a ruling on whether or not it would fit with the reimbursement from the state. I agree. At least that. Anyone else want to comment? Rich? Bud? No. Lucian? Ryan? No? Well, I think we should take that step to give, as you just said, this, uh, uh, in reference to seeing where this is with the Board of Ed and how it fits within the budget, so on and so forth. So, do you want to, Scott, do you want to handle that with the. Uh, yeah, I, I can talk to Matt. Um, and see, you know, what, what do we need in order to say we approve? Um, Mr. Cuomo, you want to repeat what we need? Yeah. yeah. Where do you go? Do you want me to repeat it? Yes, please. So we need authorization to add this to the project from the Board of Ed, and we need some type of weigh in from the state on if they would consider this to be a reimbursable cost. Right. And if those two things are given the green light, then we would see if it's within our budget and hopefully vote to approve. Right. But right now it's out of our hands. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Just for your entertainment, would you like to see what, what I'm talking about? I've seen it. There's no question. They all need to be replaced. It's okay. you wouldn't leave it like this. Yeah. If, if there's any way for us to do it, I'd fight for it. Okay. Yeah. I, what you might want to do for the board of education or for, you know, your backup is to take photos of it now showing you what it looks like. And well, I, said, I have, I have photos. I could have shared them with you, yeah. but I can share them with, I mean, Matt knows the condition as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Moving on. All right. I guess that kind of finishes the uh, all the um, quiz stuff in regards to CEOs and all that. The next thing we have on our agenda now would be our application for payment from uh, Downs. We have application number what is it, 14 in the amount of $807,659.48. Is that correct, Matt? Is right. Matt. Matt. Yep. Yep. That's correct. Okay. Do we have a motion to accept this? Do so moved. So moved. Second. 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 I got a question on the numbers. Go ahead. I'm, Mark, under the GMP allowances, it looks like you're looks like you're, you've gone down from May to June. May was 58% utilization and June's 54%. Is that correct or is that yeah. just the yes, it's, title yes, sheet? It's accurate. Yeah, it's accurate. Okay. Yep. It's ac- yes, it is. Okay. Yep. That's just uh, through that month period of time it's gone down. That's all. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Rich? Can't hear you. Okay. It looks like everyone agrees here. Can't, I don't hear it all in voice, but it looks like it's all in favor. So we're going to approve it at this point. Okay. okay. Next item. 
Okay, next time I have, I have a, uh, um, this Castle Booze uh, invoice. May 7th, Castle Booze, phase one, uh, regarding the amount of uh, $76,817.20. Do I have a motion? What, what's that echo here? What's that echo going on? Can everybody hear everybody all right? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. We have a motion to accept the Castle Booze invoice for $76,817.20. So no move. No move. Second? Second. Conversation? Second. Any conversation on this? Ken from Colliers, have you had a chance to review the FF&E? Uh, yes, I've seen the FF&E invoices coming through. Hey, Dick, Jeff Shea, this is actually a payment to Red Thread, even though Castle Booze... Yeah, I was, was just going to say, I see Red Thread, so this goes to Red Thread, the people as suppliers of the uh, equipment versus uh, Castle Booze design, right? Correct. Separate contract. All right, so basically on this contract, uh, just for, for, for our team knowing what it is, there's going to be another $4,000 due on this coming forth when the rest of the material comes in. Is that correct, Jeff? That's what it looks like, yep. Yeah. yeah. If, so if we receive everything on the purchase order, yeah. Yeah, okay, so can we have approval for this section of it as of right now? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so move. Good. Okay, moving on. We have an invoice from Colliers. Uh, invoice number 006200 for the amount of, I can't read it, uh, $1,398.89. Does that sound right, Jeff? I don't have a copy in front of me. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it's 1398.69. Okay, 69. So, motion? So, motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So approved. Aye. Okay. Then you have another one from Colliers for invoice number 006003. The amount of 876720. 80, motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Ryan Burns, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So Aye. carried. Next day. Okay. Then we have an invoice from Van Zelm, uh, March 20th, invoice number 47163 for amount of $1,716. So I hear a motion. Ryan so moved. moved. Second. What, what's the nah, Second. I'll talk about this for may a minute. I, may, I ask, uh, may I ask what's remaining on that? We have, we have the two yeah. of these on here, unfortunately. We have one for, one's dated March 20th. Now, we didn't approve that before, Jeff? Which, uh, you're talking Van Zell? Yeah. Um, no, I don't believe so. I think this came in late. Uh, I thought it did, too. Yeah, because we got two invoices. We got one for we got one for March 20th, which is one we're just talking about now, for 1716. And then we're going to have another one here right after that for uh, 281390 for uh, May 15th. So let's move the first one first. How much money is left? There you go. That's a good question. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was just going to point out. Uh, that's the operative they have, question. Balance, they have a balance of about $8,000 yet. Eight and, and you got to remember, we haven't, we haven't commissioned phase three, four, or five. They're just moving into that, as Mark reported, coming up uh, on tomorrow, well, this week, I should say. Yeah. So just okay. keep that in mind. All right, so let's go back up a minute then. So, so the March 20th for 1716, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. I think we got to talk about it. If we're, we're approving them to be 100% complete when they haven't done three phases. They're not, they're not 100% complete yet. They're not, That's no, what their you, bill says. If you... Well, on the one, on the one and electrical and plumbing. Yeah, right. on, the, uh, no. on the one. 
But then down where it says CX, that's commissioning activities, where they have 14,310. Right, right. That's just, okay, but that's just for the high performance guidelines. Right. Right. We should just make a note in the minutes that that's not 100% completion on all phases. Not 100% completion on these. No, that's right. Make note in the minutes. Right. I agree. But, all right. So what's their first line item for? Mechanical electrical plumbing? Right. The 98% complete is what they're saying. No way. They, they haven't even right. completed the commissioning of the auditorium. Yeah. They haven't even begun the commissioning of the lighting or the audio visual. They haven't done anything and they haven't completed phases three, four, or five. They're still yeah, active. That's right. They're, they're still they're active. They're just starting phases three, four, and five this week. Mark's absolutely right. All right. Well, how they, how they say they should complete. They say it's 98, 98% complete back on March 20th. And now in the new bill on May 15th, they say they are 100% complete. We're representing construction completion at 82% in our, in our, in our agenda to you. All right. Yeah. I, think what I, I think what we should do is back off on Ben's um, not approve any one of these two. Let me kind of contact them and see what's going on. Fair enough. Okay, that's, that's what we'll do. We're going to hold on. Okay? okay. All right. All right. Anything else for Henry James? Hearing none? Hearing none. Moving on. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I, I know that we have the uh, Sinsbury High School roof replacement project. I know. Uh, uh, oh, hey, Al's here. I, I thought he was gone. Uh, Andrew Kunski is here. Will you want to talk to us on how this project is now on hold or what's going to do? Al? Uh, yes, we, uh, we received a letter from the state authorizing us to go to bid on May 6th. Um, on that same day, I had a conference call uh, with Jeff Shea, Andy O'Brien, Jason. We established bid dates, um, established pre-bid conferences. Um, we had a pre-bid conference scheduled for the 14th and bids were supposed to be open on the 27th. Um, about an hour later, uh, Jason uh, Casey sent me an email that the superintendent was uncomfortable in putting the out the bid and basically put everything on hold. And, you're, you're coming cut off. I can't quite understand what you're saying, Al. I, I said that Jason sent an email about an hour after our conference call on May 6th saying that the superintendent was uncomfortable in bidding the project for the summer. And right now the project's on hold. Right. So the project is on hold, basically. Yep. Postponed to 2021. Right. Okay. Until when? I'm sorry. I did review with the state to make sure that we're okay uh, with the bidding procedures, and we are. We we could bid this project, or actually enter into a construction agreement until April second, twenty twenty two. Okay, so, so we have time to hold off on this thing then. We do, right? Okay. All right. So that's your report. That's where we're at. Okay, thank you, you very much, Alan. I'm concerned sure. about a little bit is remember for every year of delay, there's there's probably a cost escalation involved. Yeah, but I mean, we got to run this back to the Board of Education and let them make their decision what they want to do. And I look at Andrew, can you you want to do that or? I'm here, Dick. What was that request? Do you want to talk to the Board of Education regarding their holding off on the roof of the high school? What it will do for cost? Well, we probably also look to look to Al to say, Al, can you give us an estimate on on how that may grow? Oh. I know that the the concern the concern to put this off was really that that uh, the project may get started but not reach completion in time for a smooth start to the school year in the fall. And given the disruption that we've experienced in the spring, we did not want to take a chance on having a uh, a further compromised return to school at the high school in the fall. Al? Well, I mean, we, you know, we were, we would be reviewing bids today because bids would be received on the 27th. Um, I know that the contractors are very hungry for work. John McConville from Silkdown called me and asked if I had anything out going out to bid. Bruce Rolokitis from Imperial called me, you know, Again, I can't predict the future, but I, I feel that there was plenty of time to get this job done in light of the fact that we were able to start a little bit earlier because school was closed. 
you know, most likely if we could sign a contract within two weeks by the second, third week of June, the contractor could be on site. So but that ship has sailed at this point, right? There's yes. at this point, yep. if we were to reverse course, it would not be feasible to get it done by the beginning of school, correct? I think right now we would be pushing it a little bit uh, because we're, we're, not, we're not to bid. We're not going to open up bids until end of June and won't start until July. So we've just lost a whole month. We lost a whole month. The schedule is not going to get any better next year. Uh, the schedule is still, you're not going to be able to start working still until school gets out, which is probably going to be somewhere around the third week of June, and they have to finish by August. So the schedule doesn't get oh, better next year. Well, just, I, let me say that because of what's going on with, you know, this Corvus problem, yeah. uh, I think come January of next year, we're going to know what the school schedule is going to be more better than we do today. And we could probably go out for bid while the kids are still in school. Go out for bid in June before they leave school. And the day they leave school, we can start construction and then finish it by the time they come back for the summer. I'm not worried about the construction duration, even if it's next year. Uh, I think two, two months is plenty of time to get this job done. I've had larger re-roofing projects that were done in the same school re-roofing projects that were done yeah. in the same time. But we can go out early for a bit. We don't have to wait until the kids leave school. No, we could go out to bed in February next year. Right. You hear what we're saying, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay. Makes sense to me, but there's just... We just I mean, you can understand right? where we are now, yeah. just with so many things in the air. Yeah. All right, so let's hold off on that until we see where we're at. We'll get more back to you, Al, and we'll go from there. But thank you very much for what you've done so far today. So. Fair enough. Can I still attend the building committee meetings? Because I'll miss you guys. Of course. You can, well, you're welcome <laughs> to sit in any time you want. <laughs> thank you. See you on the next If you don't vote, you're all right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any, old, any old business? Hearing none? Any new business? Hearing none? Do I hear a move to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. I want to thank you. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending. At least we got quite a bit done tonight compared to what we normally do. But uh, uh, it appears we're going to be meeting this way for some time, I guess, until this whole academic goes away. But uh, for the time being, uh, um, I don't know where, where our buddy, uh, there he is, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Butler went. <laughs> I'm here. Uh, yeah. I don't know what you think, but I think we're going to be doing this for quite a while. Do you think so? Uh, yeah, I, it's month to month. And I, I, I think certainly for the summer, I think we'll be doing it the same way. Yeah. Okay. And I think the only thing we have kicking around right now is this thing from Van Zelm. Uh, Jeff and I will get on that and we'll, we'll get, back to, get back to you on this. Okay. Everybody else, thank you very much and have a nice night. <laughs>